off to now? I'm to meet Will Fairfax in Annapolis. I've been to see Sister Betty. We are both very concerned about your welfare, Mother. Concerned indeed. No. no, you are getting on, and we feel that Fairy Farm is too remote and uh, difficult a place for you. you. Are you inviting me to live with you and your lady? Well, there are so many in and out of Mount Vernon, I fear you would not find it at all serene. Oh, don't worry, George. I have no intention of living under any roof where I am not mistress, so you needn't tender any grudging invitations. Mother, I wish you would please just listen to what I I'm trying to... I will stay at Fairy Farm until my bones turn to dust. Mother. <coughs> I have always been a dutiful son. And an absent one. But then it's a mother's lot to suffer the neglect of ungrateful children. You haven't touched one of my tarts. if you don't stand aside. I really hope you will convey to His Majesty the warmest sentiments of duty and affection. His repeal of the Stamp Act was an extraordinary gesture of reconciliation with the colonies. Let this be a lesson. The repeal would have come far sooner if your people had not, by their violence, challenged Parliament. May all colonists forswear any further opposition to the royal will. Hear, hear. Enjoy your ladies in the dance, gentlemen. Well, I wish I could join you, but the infernal gout would have to choose this very night to, uh, if you will, uh, kick up. <laughs> if you'll excuse us. <laughs> Had Sally and Martha not been with us, I would have reminded him of some cautions which might be practiced by the king's ministers. Will, it was not out of the goodness of their hearts that they repealed the stamps, but because with all this uproar it had not fattened their purse. George, I simply don't Gentlemen, believe that this is the... please, can't we escape for even one night? Dance with your wives, or at least talk to them. But pretty, not politics. My sentiments exactly, my dear. God's in his place, our wives in our arms, and all's right with the world. Mrs. Washington, may I have the honor? Thank you. Shall we? Remember the last time we danced? You promised to find a wife for me. And you went out and did it all on your own. George, you couldn't have made a better choice. She's warm and generous and kind. All I could have wanted for you. 
I'm a fortunate man to have known two such women. Oh, George, it's sweet of you to say that, but I can't hold a candle to her in the softer virtues. Dear Sally. And the fan. Remember the language of the fan? How could I forget? George, I'll wager you don't remember. I never could resist a wager. Watch closely now. What did I say? You want to be alone with me. A fortunate guess. Another. We're being watched. I can't believe it. You do remember. 17 years. Seems like only yesterday when you stepped down from that carriage. And it was that sentiment I bore you. And I, you, my gallant young gentleman. Even then, we both knew it could never be more. And yes, well, I must go to my husband. Sally, thank you for your friendship with Martha. She treasures it. I've never known another woman I like as much. Slow down, George. Those long legs of yours gallop a lead through every step I take. Where are we going? You'll see. And if you insist on being mysterious, I shall be as plain as day. The fat's in the fire again, George. They're still furious that our protest caused repeal of the Stamp Act. They said that from now on, anyone who opposes British colonial authority is guilty of high treason. Subject to trial in Great Britain. <laughs> Well, the great lords think they can crush us with a male fist. Little realizing that we're a new breed of men. Behold, sir, the miracle of Mother Nature. And another new breed. I put Jupiter to true love and hope to get a runner with great endurance. We'll know quite soon. Oh, George. What am I to do with you? Haven't you heard what I've been saying? We leaders must control events, George, not be controlled by them. Now, I have... All he wants is a little affection. George, I, I really am not a dog lover. This little devil will no doubt attempt to christen me. Would you just take him? Thank you. Now, if worse comes to worse, and they continue to torment us with these oppressive taxes, I propose that we simply stop importing any more goods from England. Once good King George begins to feel it in his pocketbook, perhaps he'll leave us in peace. And... Papa, they want to see our puppy. Ah, yes. Yeah. Handle them gently. Handle them gently, ladies. Look, everybody, how absolutely Don't keep them from their mother too long now. We'll be careful, Papa. Patsy, are you all right? Yes. I, I felt so strange. But I, I'm fine now. Are you certain? Papa, are you worry too much. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He's so sad. He's so sad. What are you doing in there? Hello. That's our future. Our young people. We must find the wisdom to preserve the peace for their sake. Their intempered words verge on treason. Mr. Speaker and gentlemen of the House of Burgesses, I have heard your resolves. You have made it my duty to dissolve you, and you are dissolved accordingly. My God, sir, these are legitimate grievances. You do us an injustice. You cannot simply dissolve us. Since the governor has evicted us, this tavern will have to do. <laughs> May it signal our resolve not so much to make merry as to make good sense. As Parliament is the villain and not our gracious king, let us open this solemn meeting with a Raleigh Tavern toast. <laughs> to His Majesty, George III, long life, long reign, and boundless wisdom. Yeah. To Virginia, by God. 
loyal dominion of the crown, and home of liberty. Virginia! 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 Gentlemen, if we drink any more toasts, we may forget why we're here. <laughs> Please. The chair recognizes Colonel Washington of Fairfax County. I have here a proposal drafted by my friend and neighbor, George Mason, which I make my own. The Townsend duties are an insult, even worse than the Stamp Act. They tax almost everything in trade and would destroy our freedom. Until they are repealed, we encourage all Americans not to buy imported British goods, Good. including clocks, yes. carriages, yes. shoes. I cannot believe what I'm hearing. Colonel Washington has allowed himself to be used by those who would turn us against the crown. George, I implore you, do not speak with Mason's voice. It is my own voice, Will. No other. And you join the treasonous minority. Fairfax, your head is in the sand. I think not. For what you do here tears us from Great Britain. The dire consequences shall be on your heads. Oh. being put on display by Mason, like some prize horse. It's become hard to find a moment alone with you. With you. Say, so hang all politicians if they come between friends. You mean hang Mason? Don't tell me. I still cannot believe that you proposed we not buy British goods. It is the one legal way that loyal British subjects can bring the ministry to its senses. Don't you think it's inconceivable that loyal British subjects should not share in the cost of protecting these colonies from savages and foreign enemies? Yes, but the mother country must allow the child to become a man who can make his own decision about taxes and defense. I think the child owes just return to the parent for all the affection and protection it's received. Your sentiments, Will, are ones I've often heard from my own mother. I wish I could laugh about it, but I can't. You're too much influenced by Mason's rebellious passions. And you are too much influenced by the king's men. Throw. I am one myself, and a patriot. I'm proud to be. Once thought you could say as much. By God, Will, you wrong me. George, if you, you could... damn it. I would try to my last breath to save us from conflict with Great Britain. But those damnable lords in that ministry forever look down their noses at mere provincials. It is their arrogance which threatens this peace. I cannot believe I'm hearing this from a man I call Fred. By God, George! Well, George, I was worried when you didn't come in with the others. Now will you join us? George! It's Patsy again! <laughs> The ring. Yes, you're right. Oh, God. George, is she? It will pass. Patsy? Patsy? She's rousing. Patsy? Papa? Yes, I'm here. Are you all right? I'm sorry. It happened again, didn't it? Yes. Don't worry. Don't worry. Why don't I remember? Neither Dr. Craig nor Reverend Green has been able to help. Well, maybe the water from Berkeley Springs. That's for cripples and wasting maladies. But it might help. We must try everything. We'll pray. We'll pray for a cure.
kept me company while you're away getting more water for me at the springs. I love all my music boxes, but this one most of all, because you gave it to me. Good night. Wind it again, please. And kiss me good night. I thought we agreed you were too old for that. I changed my mind. I am so glad you're my papa. You're very dear to me, Patsy. Massachusetts rebels aren't here to join us, Fairfax. You could offer them a cup of the king's hemlock. I'm only interested in doing it one of them, Mason. Samuel Adams, the devil who set that Boston mob with the king's soldiers and caused all this much ado about nothing. The bloody backs killed six citizens in cold blood, and you call it nothing? Gentlemen, I'm beginning to understand why the ladies grow impatient with us. Mason's been haranguing me ever since the governor's reception began. I'm hardly sick of it. Could you excuse us? Are we exercising our right of free expression, Fairfax? Mason, no more politics. George, politics is the very air we breathe these days. Well, perhaps we'd all be better off if we breathed the fresh air of peace instead. I know the cost of war. Certainly no one wants war, George. Let but the you... tragedy in Boston be a warning. There's too much talk of conflict between mother country and colonies. Arms should be the last resort. The very last. Just when I think you're ready to defy royal arrogance, you too bend the knee. You're a seesaw, my friend. Damn you, Mason. I will not have you malign George because he shares my loyalty to the king. And I resent your questioning my loyalty. You speak against the king. The days of absolute monarchy died with Charles I. That is treason. I think Stop not. Stop it, both of you. Look at us. We're friends. Yet politics makes us enemies. <laughs> Do you think I'm a seesaw, going from one side of the issue to the other, unable to make up my mind? Is there anything wrong in being judicious? I never was as a youth. Perhaps experiences have made me too cautious. You are not like George Mason. Such men can play with ideas. They don't have to act. While you, once you have decided, must do something about it. I missed you so much this time. I thought I'd pine away to nothing. Perhaps you'd love me more if I had. I love you just as you are. Jackie's enrolled at King's College, General Gage. Excellent, sir. May I, sir? Of course. I trust, uh, Colonel Washington, that you are not in sympathy with this dangerous talk coming from Massachusetts. The better sort are in much alarm over all this anger over the Ministry's tax on tea. I fear it may become as nasty as the Stamp Act riots. The outcasts of society think they can get their way by putting loyal subjects in fear of their lives. Colonel? Thank you, sir. Jack? Thank you, sir. Well, I can promise you, if anything like the violence of the Stamp riots occurs, we shall order in troops and quash the rebellious spirit at one blow, without regard to expense. Hear, hear. 
be an end to rebel insolence once and for all. You've been keeping your counsel, George. Have you no strong opinions? Your Madeira is excellent, sir. <laughs> Honest men have a right to act on their conscience without being called rebels or traitors. Sir, you insult your host. Nonsense, James. Perhaps we insult Colonel Washington. And certainly we bore Master Custis and neglect our heritage. In any convivial gathering of loyal subjects, what is the first thing we must do when the wine is poured? Toast the king. Colonel. To His Majesty George III. May God grant him wisdom in these tragic times. Amen to that. Oh, my dear. I've been listening for the carriage since morning. I'm always afraid something might happen to you. Nothing ever does. And how have you been? Never as well as when you were at home. Mm. Patsy? She's been practicing for hours to surprise Papa. Any incident while I was gone? I've never seen you in better spirits. I couldn't wait to get home so that you could entertain me with an evening musicale. You must both sit down right now and hear my new piece. Mm -hmm. up, George? Patsy. Patsy? Stop breathing. Patsy. Dear God. <laughs> Send someone for Dr. Craig. Patsy. Patsy! Patsy! George! Patsy! how distressed you are, dear madam. But when you consider the little probability of her ever getting well, we must conclude that she is better off in the arms of eternity. Find joy. Ways of providence being inscrutable, resignation and, as far as our reason can carry us, a cheerful acquiescence to the divine will is, is the only way. We must conclude that... George. Martha wants you to rescue her. Dear Reverend Massey is drowning her in consolation. You already have. 
Arthur never would have made it through without you. I know nothing I can say will stop the pain, but maybe one day you and Martha will have a daughter of your own. In every way that a daughter can be to a father. That's it. I'll be alone. Go. Ah, uh, look there. Shadows over Belvoir. Norman, what does it mean? It means, my dear, that you are tipsy. <laughs> well, I'm not the only topper in present company. Our George is quite the merry fellow when he's at a dram or three. George, you remember our first survey trip together? I'll never forget. <laughs> Martha, I hadn't yet married our Sally. George downed this tumbler of spiritous liquor distilled by some wild frontiersman. Caleb Quinn. <laughs> And what a caution he was after that, dancing like a country bumpkin with some common wench. Millie. <laughs> oh, he remembers. Uh, a broad bottom and a warm heart is better than kingdoms, huh? Huh? <laughs> oh, I've never seen you so rowdy. <laughs> Indeed, Sally, you should see Will rowdy more often. <laughs> then we could forget about Lord North and his parliament, oh, and eh? Sons of Liberty. And the damnable teaching. May they never reach port. Oh, forget, forget. Then we could forget about about what divides us. And think only of what makes us brothers. And sisters. And friends. Dear friends. Forever. Here, here. I would drink to forever had we not already drained the bottle. Oh. Well, we'll open another when we get back to the house. Gentlemen, I think you have had sufficient. Ooh, have we? Wow. 